Hello and welcome to the Blue Monday podcast covering Ipswich Town since 2015. I'm Richard Woodward and you're tuned into our live reaction show, the show where you set the agenda and uh, we're available every week on podcast, audio and video. And joining me tonight for group therapy or, or some something along those lines, depending on where the conversation takes us. Joe Fares, David Divers, gentlemen, we were all kind of a little bit apprehensive on the flagship talk about Rotherham and um, it basically came to pass, didn't it, as we expected. Um, Dave, let's start with you, your instant reaction to that one. Yeah, as as we feared, I think, as you summed it up there, as we all feared that they were, we knew they were going to be strong, well-organised, athletic, um, and they were all that and just had far too much for us on the night, far too much for us, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. Joe, you've been pretty active on Twitter. <laughs> I don't think I've really put that much on there, but it's just <laughs> the game just played out exactly as you as you sort of hoped it wouldn't. Effectively, there was a sort of fear going in there that they just turn up to a really professional job on us, totally boss us. And I think from minute one to minute ninety, from player one to player eleven, it, it went that way, didn't it? It was just they just absolutely schooled us in yeah in lots of different ways as well, which we'll get into, you know, even the dark arts, they were particularly masterful at that. The drinks break after their first goal was pretty inspired. Um, but obviously, as we said at the start, we want to hear from all of you. Um, we want to hear anything about Rotherham. We want to hear anything I, I suspect we'll be hearing about Paul Cook. So I will be doing my best to play devil's advocate as host and try and temper some very extreme views, um, try and keep your views respectful as much as you can as well. Um, I don't want this to, <laughs> I don't want this to turn into an all night rave. I, I don't want this to turn into kind of a bitch fest, but I do get that people are concerned. And so we'll try and deal with that as much as we can. Um, interesting way to start. Um, uh, our frequent flyer, ADRAHC is a Rotherham fan miffed by the arrogance of some ITFC fans We've gone all Billy Big Bollock since the takeover. Cook will fail because of the expectation of fans and not the hierarchy. Leopard and Spots up the Millers. Um, that's quite a stark way to start. Any reactions on that one? I mean, welcome fans from all, like, all other clubs, but I wouldn't suggest there was any arrogance apart from maybe a level of expectation, which is not unreasonable, yeah. Joe, given what we spent. I, I think it's an absolute load of rubbish, to be honest. Oh! Sorry, to the, sorry to the poster, <laughs> but it is. People talk about the expectations of the Ipswich fans. We're, we're bloody the biggest spenders in the league by distance. We've gone out. We could have, we would have signed Rotherham's best player had their manager not hawked him about so much. He managed to finally get a championship move, so he didn't come here. And yet, we're now 13th in the league. And, and half the Ipswich fan base is just sitting there saying, oh, well, we're part of a rebuilding project. It might take two years to get up. And it's hardly expect. I think the problem is with the Ipswich fan base is the expectations aren't high enough, really. I think okay. the expectations are too low because it's absolutely ridiculous where we are in the league. Like I said, we played 10 home games. We've won three against three teams in the, in the bottom four. It's just this yeah, season is going worse than I think anyone could imagine. Last year went when Cook came in, went worse than anyone could imagine. And it's, it's not the expectation of the fans. Look, you, you saw the atmosphere last night. Yeah, it was flat, but it wasn't a toxic atmosphere. There wasn't any any real booze or anything like that. The fans are unbelievable at this football club. Rotherham, top of the league. How many fans did they bring last night? 267. We're going to Charlton in a week or so. We've sold over 3,000 tickets to that. That's not expectation of fans. That's because we are a big club with a big fan base and the, the football club needs to give the fans more. The, the fans are playing their part and the football club need to play their part. There you go. Joe's already up for it. This is what we want. Um, James Ruddock, Dave. He, he, and I guess this is what Joe is alluding to. Um, he's starting to realise this is this will be, not could be, will be a two-year project for operation. Um, not streetwise against the top sides, um, he doesn't mind waiting another season to iron out some of the issues. I mean, your thoughts? 
Yeah, I think that's just how it's panning out, isn't it? You certainly wouldn't have said that after the signings, the quality of signings we made at the start of the season. Um, it's just how the it's just how the the you know the season is panning out. Um, and as for yeah, you know, I totally agree with what Joe said about that post there. I mean, well, arrogance. Where does the arrogance come from? So the arrogance. Where's the arrogance? You know, we've got new owners who've spent a lot of money. We've signed supposedly supposedly got the best squad in the division. That's not that's not arrogance. That's just what it is. But um, yeah, I think um, I think Joe's spot on also with the the patience of our fan base. I think is absolutely amazing. Really, really yeah. is. Yeah. And whether um, that could well be <laughs> with this pack out Portman Road, I think I said this last night, with this pack out Portman Road coming coming up over Christmas, that could well be put to the test over Christmas. <laughs> There's some nerves now, isn't there? Particularly if we, the well, you know, look at, I mean, look, just look at our next two away. Okay, crew at home on Sunday. You look at our next two away games, what Charlton and Charlton and Wigan league games. Yeah. Back, and then you're into that Sunderland game, that could well be put to the test. It will, yeah. Um evening to Tom. Um Last night felt like it was one of those performances from the last couple of seasons. Definitely felt Lambert-esque at times, wasn't it, with the sideways pass, wasn't it? Uh, whilst everything about the club has changed, I hoped we wouldn't see a shambles like that again. Um, he's got he's got a point there, hasn't he, guys? Yeah. Um, Tom, uh, where, where have we progressed from when we, we played Rotherham under Lambert when they went up in 2019-20? We, ha- we haven't, have we? From that, from that performance compared to when we played them before. Rotherham just came and just did an absolute job on us from, from start to finish. They were just so much better than us. They 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 had a game plan. It was quite obvious what it was. Just pr- allow the balls to get to the fullbacks and just press them so hard that they had nowhere to go. And it was just... Ended up just knocking it long. Like, you look at the the spending that we've made in the summer and then the back four includes sort of Janoi Danassi and Toto Enciala and Bailey Clements. It's like, that can't have been part of the plan as to... Yeah, that's to where we are and it's just and it just showed last night and Cook just does not adapt the way we play to to what we're up against and I say you look at you look at Rotherham and they, they just they just knew how to play against us and they just absolutely bossed it I mean and I think they're a good well, I think though, aren't they let's be honest they're, yeah, they're a really good side they're a really they're, they're good, a good side. side they're very very good very solid very good big strong yeah everything but I mean, talking about possession stats, and we say possession, you know, possession stats lie. I mean, look at the possession last night. Was it something like it was ridiculous? The one I saw was it 61 oh, 30, was it 61 39? What was it? Oh, Christ, even worse. That's it. That's what I did see. 64. Jesus Christ. I'd love to see the, I'd love to see the, um, the possession stats, um, the in our half. Kind of, yeah. yeah, the territory. Mm. Bloody hellfire. I yeah. mean, that, that just hasn't changed at all. And when we did, well, I think we all said on our WhatsApp group last night that just that game just panned out. It wasn't working. They had it. They had it sus pretty much from well from the kickoff really. That just plan. That just get Piggott on far far early and just feed the balls in. Just get the balls in and hopefully get us you know drop on those second balls. But we just even when Piggott came on, then we stopped doing that. Remarkably, yeah, and him and Bond clearly that understanding wasn't there either. You could kind of tell that was kind of a bit of a panic yeah. move. Um, we'll go where the and... we'll go where the comments go. By the way, so I, I I've got stuff lined up. If we want to talk about the goals we conceded, the selection, oh, really? but we'll go where we'll go where um our, uh the folks in the chat want to go. Um, first things first, we want we need to say um thank you to Kirk in the uh, in the chat has done a super chat. Thank you, Kirk Di Giorgio. Yeah, um, thank you very name. much for that. We appreciate your support. Um, yeah. And anyone support who's donating to the channel, your names go up on the um, end credits. Um, and so we do appreciate that. Kirk, thank you so much. Um, and Matt Taylor for the thumbs up on Facebook as well. We appreciate that too. So um, if you want to do that, um, bluemondayitfc.co.uk, lots of different ways to do that. If you're on YouTube, um, there's a little super chat dollar kind of button there. Feel free to do that. We appreciate anyone who does that. Um, no obligation, of course. Um, we will keep doing what we do. Um, but only helps improve things and it, it pays for well it doesn't pay for joe's i'm basking in the glow of joe's hoodie by the way it is it's quite bright isn't it that is vibrant <laughs> i think would be the word um looking to take us into more positive territory thank you chris for helping me provide balance um his question things may not be going as we hoped but regardless can each of the panel name the most recent season they enjoyed more than this and state how long ago it was there's a question. Well, and up and, up until this well. point of the season, I, I quite enjoyed 2019-20 when we were flying top of the league, winning 
sort of going to Gillingham and winning one nil, going to MK and winning, and going to Fleetwood and winning, and that was sort of enjoyable until Paul Lambert lost the plot. But yeah, this has been some of the football has been more entertaining, but ultimately. Most Stipswich fans, like we're all season ticket holders, we get to some away games, but our home form has been crap this year, hasn't it? And it's just not been, yeah, we've drawn, but it's because we've scored late goals. We've sort of managed to get equalisers. So a game like Sheffield Wednesday or Morecambe, you come away feeling good about it, but it's still rubbish results. Like we've we've won three home games out of 10 this season. And it's, like I said, Shrewsbury, Fleetwood of a last minute winner and Doncaster, three poor teams. So you're you're going for a couple of seasons back, Dave? Can you remember? A, oh, I mean, it's, it's got to be the last playoff season, hasn't it? I guess 14, that 14, 15, yeah, yeah, that fourteen fifteen season, I think. Which which around Christmas time, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Oh, that was fantastic. But it didn't I think it was a bit of a slow burn to begin with? I want to say for the first month, maybe even six weeks, we weren't particular. I know we beat Fulham first game. That sort of set us up. But it was all, I think we had a few defeats after that and it was all fairly flat. And I think there was a turning point. I think Derby were one of the biggest sides there. And I think we were losing one, maybe one nil to them at half time. And then I think either Bishop suddenly was played in a different position or Bishop was introduced and he was outstanding. We got a point there. And it seemed to sort of gather momentum from there. And obviously you had a 27 goal striker, <laughs> which kind of helped. Still. But yeah, probably. Yeah, some good away days in that season as well. So yeah, I would not yeah. that one. Yeah. Um, Gary, um, welcome to Gary. Um, still living hope for a playoff spot. Uh, this is a rebuild for Santa Remain, so anything above playoff is a bonus. I guess that's, we're kind of talking about levels of expectation. I don't, but I don't see Gary's. how we can claim it's a rebuild when on transfer deadline day, we've signed Burst Antelina and Christian Walton on loan deals when they're obviously hugely expensive players. We've got five loanees in the squad. We're gonna, we'll, we'll need a rebuild every su- in this league, you have to rebuild your squad every summer because you just can't keep hold of a squad in this league. And we're going to inevitably start talking about the January window as well. It feels like there's reinforcements needed definitely up front, <laughs> maybe even at full back and centre back as well, which is crazy when you think about it. Um, Charlie, from the kickoff, it looked all wrong. I mean, is he is he being generous there, guys? Here's, here's the lineup, and just... I'll remove the comment just very. Um, there we go. That that kind of attacking three um, was a bit of a worry, wasn't it? And it kind of it kind of it, came, it showed just, to be just, that case, didn't it? For me, it just all it looked totally a bit disjointed, and it was just flat. I just thought it was flat straight from the off. I mean, yeah, okay, give give them credit as we have already. They perhaps had a lot to do with that being so dominant on the ball, but I think it was just flat all evening, really. Yeah. Um, what else have we yeah. got, Rob? Um, are the playoffs still realistic, or are you looking at next season? Wow. Well, if you if you look at the numbers on it, effectively, when when we last got in the playoffs in 2014-15, we got 78 points in the season to finish sixth. Normally, you probably get like 75, but to get 78 points from here, we that's need two point. points a game, effectively. So that's title winning form from this point on, just to get sixth effectively so it's and when you look at the games we've got coming up like obviously we've got crew on Sunday which if you can't beat them you might as well give up and then <laughs> after after that where, where do we go from there we go to Charlton who are sort of a really good up. side also, yeah. and Wigan Charlton uh, well so the, the two cup games and it's Charlton then it's Wigan then Sunderland and are we going to get eight points from those four games difficult isn't it yeah, um, lots of folk talking about expectation and arrogance. I think yeah. this is a fair point from Charlie, isn't it? Um, to the point we had at the start. Um, and I, I don't want to do a pile on that on ADRAHC. You know, uh, it's, it's a fair comment to make. It's you know, it's, it's encouraged a bit of a discussion. But I think everyone's got uh, from at least with a blue ten blue a blue bias has certainly got a, a view on that one. Um, and I think this probably sums it up quite well from Charlie, doesn't it? Um, also need to say, Skip, um, a frequent flyer on these live shows. Thank you um, for, a, um, for the super Hong chat. Kong, um, I was going to say that. that. He's Hong Kong Fu Could have done with was... some Kung Fu fighting last night, couldn't we as well? Skip, thank <laughs> you so much for that donation. Um, really stuff. appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, and also thumbs up from Andrew on Facebook as well. Hello, Facebook. We see you too. Don't worry about that. Um, Eric Clacton, one of the favourite names I've got on these. Reminded me of Lambert. Team performance last night. Um, here we go. Warnock in from FX Steve Lose. And I think the, the Lambert thing, the, um, the issue as well is we sort of saw the first half and the first half went really poorly. And they just, 
like I said, they dominated the whole half. They knew exactly how we were going to play. We couldn't get anything going at all. And then sort of to come out after 45 minutes, when Paul Cook has seen that 45 minutes like we all have, and just to come out with exactly the same team, there was no... Like I said, there's a few comments on here about urgency, looking sleepy. We just came out and looked as lethargic as we did in the first half. In the second half, there was no... no you, change, you, was you, you normally expect a reaction when you come out at, after half time, don't you? When you played okay. that poor in the first half, and there, and there was no reaction at all. There was no change at all. And then when we did make a change, the first one was a left back for a left back. I was very yeah. surprised there weren't any changes at half time last night. Very, very surprised. Yeah. What would you have done, Dave? Just out of interest, because I didn't feel like anyone was really working. Well, Joe, I mean, that, Joe mentioned about the full back. Look, you know, young Bailey Clements, I think, has done he's done well up to a point. He was very good in the Oxford game, but I think he was slightly found out last night. I might have gone, I know it's full back for full back. You perhaps needed something more than that, but I think I might have done that at half time, actually, just something to, to mm. shake the team up. Okay. Um, what else at half time? I don't know. Perhaps that would have been my only change at that point. But yeah, just something. Just just change something for goodness' sake. Yeah. But to do, yeah, it, it it was just much of the much of the same and more lethargy, really, wasn't it? Um, Eb, I'm going to put this up because um, I appreciate the comments that people hear. <laughs> um, I don't want to start speculating on how long on, Cook has got. I mean, but Joe's got a view. I'm God, sure. Joe, but... What are you in there? Well, we've got the owners over December the 18th, haven't we? Yeah. So yeah. if 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 we well, like I say, we if we we've got four games, four league games between now and then. If if we haven't, well, sorry, three league games between now and then. If we can't win at least a couple of them, we're, we're going to be so far off the playoffs at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they okay. maybe they want to be doing second interviews when they're in the country for the new manager. <laughs> okay, I'm moving us on swiftly from that one. We didn't um, comment Josh... on War... we didn't comment on Warnock in. Go on then. <laughs> no, no. It's exactly what exactly what my eldest said. Walking away, walking away. Yeah, exactly what He's he said. Always last wanting night. the job as well. Walking up. Exactly what he said. There you, there you go. go. Josh, <laughs> this is quite a good point. At the start of the season, everyone, and again, about expectations, was hopefully being champions. Then it went to autos. <laughs> and then it, we, at least we can make the playoffs. And now it's a project and mid table. I was okay. Yeah. It's kind of, there isn't an erosion there of expectations. And that's, what, that's what's happened the last two on. seasons as well, coming yeah. out of the club as yeah. well. That's, that's exactly the pattern that's gone for the last two seasons. Um, Skip, um, reinforcing the points yep. about expectation top 10 for home gates in the championship. Um, yeah, certainly right there. Um, yeah. Rob, this is an interesting point, Dave. The majority of the team, the majority of the team last night were players from, with championship credentials. So why do we get completely outplayed by a good League One team? I think there's something that you can infer from that question. Yeah. But give us your thoughts. No, exactly. I mean, I, I just don't think sometimes we're, we're smart enough because they are. We, we know they're quality players and they are. He's quite right of championship pedigree. But I don't know. They just, to me, they just—they're not brave enough with the ball. They, they, how many times did we actually break break the line last night? Never, hardly fair. Maybe Selena once or twice in the first half, but that was some was some really clever clever play. But hardly at all, you know. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, I, I still don't think we're just smart enough, really. Street smart enough. I don't know what it is. What about this point from Skip? Um, lack of plan B is killing us. Teams like Rotherham know exactly what they need to do. A guy called ITFC Analytics on Twitter, I think it is, has, has, has remarked on the how the R4 or 2 3 1 system seems to be dismantled by teams playing three at the back. Um, and uh, certainly Rotherham played three at the back, didn't they? I think Sunderland did as well. Um, coincidence, maybe, but tactically, has Skip got a point here on plan B, Dave? Or lack of. Yeah, I think he has, although you can't compare, as at the, you know, as at the game, you can't compare Sunderland to Rotherham. Sunderland were terrible. No, Sunderland I back mean, to it. Absolute, absolutely. Drew with Shrewsbury last night. Oh, they're ten awful. Man ten men Shrewsbury, yeah. for goodness sake. They were dreadful. No, Rotherham were a totally, totally different different class to different class to Sunderland. But, you know, he's, he's spot on and every everyone can see it. We just we just need something something different, you know, whether in-game or not. You know, just starts, but... It, I don't know what it is. These managers these days, you know, and I know Ben always laughs and doesn't need, you know, with me laughing about two up front and stuff. But Christ, we're talking about League One. And people were ta- saying around me last night about this. And we're saying this is League One. This is not bloody Champions League, for Christ's mm-hmm. sake. You know, we've seen, you know, there's times this season. OK, maybe not last night. They're very well organised at the back. When we have gone <laughs> direct, you know, we've got the ball forward early. We've scored. We've scored goals or, you know, we've created something. Um, I just don't, I just don't understand the style, the 
the style, the plan sometimes, you know, I, I don't know. It, what, what gets me last night, there was no one, even Morsey last night, was just brave with the ball at all. No, yeah. Not no at one all. Was, it was, also easy. was trying, but it was also slow, will. wasn't it? Oh, yeah. I got it, Joe. It was ponderous. It was slow. Bloody easy to play against. You know, you just, they just sit just sit back. Yeah, we'll let them. We'll let them have 64% of the possession if they're playing in front of us. So even easy. when and we did and get down the side against we them, did and the we then went backwards ball. and sideways, didn't we? And let oh, them get back. When, when we did, there was just when we did have a good opportunity, to be fair, the kind of final ball wasn't great. I think Chaplin uh, got in one second half and it picked out the first defender again. You know, it was good in area, but yeah, it's um it's well, there you go. Oh well, that led to the that, that comment there led to the first goal, didn't I was it? Gonna it was say, Dave, yeah. yeah. So Simon there, uh, Chaplin against six foot four defenders, the long balls. So when we did go direct, because you're not going to go short if you're Christian Martin, if you've got NCR to play it to, with, with all due respect. Well, we didn't go direct. Nice just, we, just, we just ended up having to have it a bit long. Because, because they, they pressed, pressed us, yeah. didn't they? So they just high, pressed us they? back. And when, yeah, when we got the ball in decent positions, we were so slow with the ball that we just allowed them to get themselves back, get into shape. And they were a really good, organised side. They pressed triggers. They... They knew what they were doing. They knew when to go as a team. They, they just went organised. And when you're playing against a team like that, you've got to try and catch them on the hop. When when you get a chance and they're not quite set into position, you've you've got to try and break quickly at that point. Even when we were getting a free kick and had a chance to put it in the box, no, we would don't. just pass the ball short, short. and end up oh ending up the don't. ball going back to Christian Walton. And it's like Round me up you've got something awful like, those free kicks. Like, yeah. Rotherham, Rotherham, a tough side to break down, and you've got you've got to sort of try and do it properly. You're not gonna you're not going to have someone pull a bit of magic out and get I through their two banks quickly. Those three kicks, I just don't get those three kicks because they're in their half. Just, you know, we're struggling with one down. I remember a couple in the first half. Just get the, just get bloody Edmondson, get NCL there. Just throw it in there, as the old saying. Just throw it in the mix. But we were, and the thing is, we persisted with this. Even when Piggott came on, we were passing it around sideways across their area, weren't they? He was camped in. And eventually, I think Bon. Did Bon have a shot near the end in the, in the injury Pick time? Pickett had a header, didn't he? Yeah, Pickett yeah, had a header. That was it. That was the but only we, time anything we on top. didn't change it up, did we? All right, we need to move on because we've got plenty of comments. But, yeah, <laughs> it skips point percentage of sideways and backwards pass. Backwards the ones that we did it first half, the ones we did and Bon got across with Danassian headed it back. And that was a decent chance. He didn't quite praise that edge of the box. Had yeah. a volley, which he... Reasonable connection to scuff. But that's just an example when we did get it in the box. Edwina's big fan, Joe. Not being specific, but... Hoodie, comments, opinions. There you go. There's love out there for you, <laughs> uh, which we always want to hear from. Um, Rob, um, so much analysis going on these days. It doesn't take very long for other teams to figure out how to counter us, especially when there's only one plan. Too easy. I think we all agree with that, don't we? Um, Rob D, um, fullbacks are the issue. Well, yeah, the this is one fails without them, Joe. This is one of the this is one of the biggest issues that. When, like I say, when Paul Cook spoke at the AGM or the EGM at the start of the season, he said that effectively he has a square of players, his two centre backs and his two central midfielders, and they are the players that are responsible for all the defensive work. The full backs just go, they're wingers, and and those four cover everything else. Well, when you don't have um, Kane Vincent Young, either in form or fit, when you don't have a Hayden Colson or even a Matt Penny, and your full backs are Janoy Danassian and Bailey Clemens, they they don't it doesn't it doesn't work so you uh, and part of the manager's job and something Cook failed badly at last year is to look what he's got available in his squad and utilize what is available to make the sort of team that can win the most games and it's and it's not trying to get players to play roles that they aren't capable or aren't able to play it's not so, like Janoy Danashian, I think maybe he's looked a bit better in an attacking sense when he's had Wes Burns there with him yeah. because Burns does a lot and, and gets back and covers time, a lot. Hmm. But when they, these players had no one in front of them on either side, they, they can't go. And then it's, it's not their fault that they're not that type of player, but it's, it's Cook's fault that he needs to effectively change the system to something that that it's... works with fullbacks there, whether it's, whether it's just going to a simple 4-4-2 because... Janoy Danassian, to me, is a right back in a in a four four two where someone sits in front of him. But you, you can't you can't have Sam Morsey and Lee Evans basically not crossing the halfway line, and then the two fullbacks barely doing the same. And when they get up there, all they do is go back inside. You've you've got to we've effectively got six defenders on the pitch there. 
Yeah. It's just it's, so, it's just a shame that yeah, obviously Colson's picked up this injury. We've barely seen him, have we? And you know, Vincent Young again injured and just I guess lack of form because those two, what what you've seen from Colson already and what we know Vincent Young is capable of would fit the bill. But yeah, just haven't had them. But Fisher and, and Burns it's... has been a miss. Burns has been a miss. Yeah, these last it, two games, even a Luca as well last night. And yeah, yeah, condolences to him and his family. That's obviously oh, that's really sad. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nick's uh, priority for him is sorting out a fullback problem, and he mentions the central midfield. I mean, last night you've mentioned it. I think Dave Morsey, um didn't really, you know, the steal, but, the fight, the kind of determination that we were expecting. I see what I see. It, it. Joe, Joe, just, Joe just said about it. I, I just can't see playing two holding midfield, especially at home. Central holding midfielders at home, for goodness sake. If your fullbacks are gone, then it doesn't matter if you've got two midfielders holding. But Yeah, but if they're not, then yeah, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not having it. No. Did no. the Fraser for Evans switch make sense for you guys? That was the he kind of he brought on I forget well Evans I thought was. Evans was really poor to be honest Evans so. weren't in the game we barely yeah. in the game was because he when, when we've played well is when Evans is able to put those sort of good crossfield passes get Diag- get us Diag- moving Diag- up the pitch quickly and I don't think he hit one last night no hmm. no he didn't yeah free kick weren't a bad effort not on target not a bad never effort, going in though was it no not really but uh, he didn't he didn't really show. He didn't, really he didn't show move the ball quickly enough. And that, to be honest, that's his role in the team. He's the fulcrum of the team to move. I mean, I'd, I'd still, quickly. I'd still like to see Harper given a go. I mean, I know he hasn't perhaps fulfilled all the expectation that he came with, but he's a player there. I'd still like to see Harper given a go alongside Morsey. To be fair, yeah. Well, I think more. I, I, I can't remember whether Morsey got a yellow in the end. Last he did, night, he, that was Edmondson. I don't think so, he did. Unbelievably, I don't think he so did. He's, he, he was <laughs> playing wrong. like he was. He was playing like he was already on a booking for me <laughs> most of the game. So I don't know. If well, well I think that. the um, booking deadline has passed now. So I think he yeah. avoids we the. Stop talking man. about that. Um, yeah. uh, good day to Michael. Uh, Too slow on the ball. Um, on the ball, the back. Cross the back line. They waited for the ball to go to Toto. Then he'd lump it into no man's hands or shaky back pass. And yeah, I think that's pretty think, fair, think, isn't it? I think it's, it's every time. Look, I like, as I said before, I like Toto alongside Edmondson just, you know, to head the balls away and clear balls. But it's clear that, you know, any side, any side has done any sort of homework on us at all. When, when the ball finally reaches Toto at the back, oh, OK, you can have it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or he'll turn and make a mistake. So you've got to press yeah, him. Yeah. Um, Kirk, um, he of the kind donation earlier, um, he's worrying, uh, worrying about 13th place. Fear other managers know how we'll play. And um, he's gonna he's going atomic, guys. Go Watford, as in replace the manager and, and and keep them until it works. And as soon as it doesn't, you know, there's a lot of legacy. And I don't know if this is something that we wanna we, we fear at Ipswich because we've got this reputation of giving managers time. Is that now is that past? Is is it in, in the position we're in in League One, frankly? And you wonder whether what Norwich might be doing in this certain circumstance. I shudder to raise their name on this podcast. But would they not be being pretty impatient with managers and looking to get, you know, try something until success happens, Dave? Is your thoughts on, on that yeah, one? Yeah, I, I mean, I, th- I think so. Like we said before, we've been, you know, remarkably, um, r- remarkably patient. I mean, someone around again made a good comment, you know, last night that um, it's very much, very much Cook's coaching team as well. So if, if and when, let's say, Cook goes, then the coaches is going to be a complete revamp, isn't it? An absolute complete revamp. So um, back from FXT about Peter Reid. Uh, I mean, there was thoughts that Peter Reid had caused the kind of the upturn of form Confusion. that culminated with Wickham. Oh, Wickham, sorry. Um, but well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what his what his advice has been, but I'm not sure it's been <laughs> very good up to now. We ultimately don't know. Bless you, Joe. By the way, good on you for muting. Um, even to Pablo Caduga, he's Cook doesn't make it to the new year for him. Oh, there we go. We're putting wow. timelines on. It's, it's very it's hard to know what is what are the thoughts behind the scenes, though, isn't it? Because yeah, we we true. just don't know what this board is like. All all we know is that I suppose Mark Ashton kept Lee Johnson in the job at Bristol City a long time, but then yep. Lee Johnson was his man. Where Paul Cook probably isn't, is it? He mm-hmm. he might be his man for the moment, but well, well the way to we'll be fair, see, the way. But... Re- Rome results are going in League One. Supposedly, one who was his first choice was it Appleton at Lincoln. He might well yeah, be available. Yeah, reasonably I mean, soon. let's put the league table up because they they lost again last night, didn't they? Slide. Yeah, there they are, just below Ipswich. Oh, yeah, the game in hand. <laughs> the game in oh, hand. So. Oh, yeah, and probably a fifth of the budget. There you go. Um, well, one thing that does stick stick um, uh, to me there is uh, look who's is it is it 
Everyone's got yeah, in tenth place is the Cheltenham for goodness sake. Yeah. Wow, who, there you go. Word. Who had to Cheltenham. sell their best player to Wrexham in the non league yeah. because and Portsmouth yeah, Wrexham having had a really shocking I, 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 Portsmouth miles ahead of us now with a game yeah. I know, same number of games, five points ahead, is it? Yeah. Yeah. But look at that. Oxford's on a massive winning streak. The only the only blight on that is the draw against us. So, you know, silver linings, guys. I'm trying to find them. I'm doing my best for you. <laughs> um, Andrew, taking his grandson Ronnie to the game on Sunday. Please, let's hope yeah. we get a win. God, we need to go for a 3 one, we will concede. Um, Andrew, thank you for that, and all the best for the for Ronnie on on Sunday. Um, give us your predictions for crew. We'll end up with those predictions at the end. Um, worth just giving a shout to bits and pieces we've got this week. Obviously, um, this will this is our live show midweek. Um, we've got the pre match show on, which go out Friday, I think, with Seb and I talking about crew. We've also got Francine from Rainbow Tractors talking about the Rainbow Laces campaign, which I think it was just had a marking on Sunday with other teams in the EFL, so look out for that. Um, flagship show will be out. Well, there's a debate and we, we haven't really resolved this yet. We might do the flagship show live on Sunday, given the game is on Sunday. So if you've got positive or negative feelings towards that, at Blue Monday ITFC, let us know what you think about that. We'll stick it in the comments and we'll make a decision um, and let folk know. But all the details, whatever you need to find, be it our socials, a podcast feed or video feed um, um, and how to donate and all that fun stuff blue monday itfc.co.uk go and check stuff out there um rob back at it any sign of the super levels of fitness that paul cook set such store by a while back i have to say i was there yeah they were wearing black shirts last night last night and the the warm-up was a lot more thorough from our fitness coach than they've been in recent years um was fitness a factor for you guys last night Joe? I, I don't think it was fitness, but they, they just looked so much more hungry for the ball, didn't they? They, yeah. they didn't let anything die. That, and when they pressed, they really pressed properly and just, I don't know, I, I just thought we were just, they, they just looked a yard faster than us, an inch bigger. I, I, every, every, all, all over the pitch, every single player just looked better. Sharper. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been a feature of our play at home this season, you know, bang on about it, but the second ball, you know, we hardly ever seem to ever seem to land on it. Hardly ever. It's so like it, you and I have talked about second balls day for about five years. Pretty well, I know. I, I know. It's pod. just been a theme going right through, you know. Um, and they were certainly just sharper than us all, all over the park last night. Yeah. Um, I think this is uh, this is our mate Leaf, Joe. Um, Leaf, good on Leaf. chaps. Um, what do you think will be the re- oh, okay the realistic tipping point for the board? When does our lack of wins become too much for them to put up with? I mean. The lack of wins stretches only a few games. Let's, I guess, be clear about that. Joe, you're sticking with your 18th December seems to be a pivotal moment given the, the ownership are over. Um, Dave, do you want anything to add on to that one? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. You know, with no. these two with these two away games coming up, I think um, that would seem a that would seem a reasonable a reasonable date, really. Yeah. Yep. And with the January window in sight, obviously, yeah. as well. Um, Charlie D is clearly the only store we could do in one season. I'm not sure. I mean, they were pretty pragmatic. And we've heard stuff with the Q&As, Joe, that they realised it would be a longer term. I wonder I wonder what they actually think, though, because... I guess they hoped for better, didn't they? It was in the summer that we were going to be showing no mercy on League One, wasn't it? So, mm. <laughs> And with, with the money they've spent, we shouldn't be. Yeah, I, like Paul, really... I, like Paul, I like Paul Warren's comment, pro... Um, Pre-game last night, we said any team finishes above Ipswich will get get promoted. That's, 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 that's twelve. Like to the twelve teams, <laughs> thirty-eight team championship. Next yeah, season. exactly right. Um, yeah, right. KBY um, Michaels. Um, why not have KBY one size um, and have that one attacking fullback on the pitch? It seems strange that you'd have him on the bench and and not use him. Um, no, I guess... You need at least one attacking fullback. Especially like, with... Really, you need two, but you need at least uh, one out there yeah. if, we, if we're trying to play this way. Yeah. Um, Dave, I'll go to you on this one. Fishing with Nick. Not all our summer recruits have worked. No surprise. What is the focus in January? We've kind of talked about fullbacks. Fishing with Nick's already talked about centre mids. I've mentioned centre strikers. Back. Centre back. <laughs> I mean, where, centre where's back. your priority? So, so another 18 players. Um, <laughs> uh, probably a striker, I would say. If Piggott, you know, if Piggott, if, if, I mean, just, just can't say imagine. I mean, and that, that's already been spoken about this week where Macaulay Bond was quite outspoken about, well, if I get recalled by QPR, I won't be happy. Q, Mark Warburton, obviously going to come out and say, well, that's not really his decision. That's our, that's, that's our decision. So, 
I mean, QPR, I think, are doing doing pretty well. Seeming their forwards seem to be scoring goals, you know. So you would hope you would you would hope not, but yeah, we're thin. We are we're thin up top. Um, not sure what the recall is on our boy down at Swindon, Joe. Interesting thought. Yeah, it's no, not, not sure on that. But he, I think he scored again last night, didn't he? He's, I mean, he's scoring he's goals. A really good and he's a, he, I mean, he is a you. I mean, you know, we're crying out for a player like that at the moment. Uh, well, yeah, well, to play up front with Bond, but he's certainly a unit, isn't he? I, feel, I mean, Louis Barry can play out front, guys. Is this an opportunity for Louis Barry? Not on his own in this season. No, own. Fair enough. I, I'd, try I'd, love, look, I'd, I'd try my best. Surely, I'd, I'd love to see him again. I'd just love to see him get another you know, another go at some point. Perhaps he will against, obviously, Arsenal um, and maybe Arsenal Barrow Barry. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Feels yeah. like the ship has sailed for Barry, though, doesn't oh, it? Oh, really? definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I thought that was a yeah. pun you were going to go with there, Joe, but obviously not get thinking about that one. We've had loads of comments, so I'm going to plough through these as much as possible. We'll stay on the air as long as folk are interested, but I'm aware that I'm miles behind. I'm 20 minutes behind on the comments, so I'm going to skip through some of them. Apologies if we've covered them before, um, but I'll try and pick out some different bits and pieces to talk about. Um, RJM23, I am still positive. This squad is capable of winning five, six, ten in a row. People need to settle down. I remember Palace being bottom um, three in the championship in February and still getting promotion is that uh, i, I, I kind of harbor some of those Palace. hopes well fine oxford then we were talking about oxford on but the whatsapp earlier I, I suppose that the thing that worries me is that we've only won two games in a row once in the 35 games that paul cook has been here like as as a squad you look at the squad and you think yeah we should be capable of winning five six seven games in a row and we're going to need to do that at some point this season if we've got any hope of making the playoffs but at the moment we can't even put like I said, when we won two in a row, that was because we scored a ninety-second minute winner against Fleetwood, wasn't it? We we yeah. haven't put we haven't really put two good performances in a row all season. We haven't, no. Um, Dan, um, one of the cooks. Dan, um, he's a fantastic man. One of the reasons Cook cleared out the squad is because he thought they were mentally weak. Has his team shown itself to have any mental strength? Who showed any leadership last night? It's a it's quite a telling question, though, isn't it, Dave? It um, is, and I think I, I tend to agree. Um, they haven't shown. I don't think they've shown any improved, any improved mental strength from from last season. Um, leadership, leadership last night. <sighs> Morsey didn't have his greatest game, did he? Oh, Ed, Edmondson again. Edmondson probably led by example from the back as he as he pretty much has done in has done in recent weeks. I think. Yeah, um, Andreas, we're rating the team game by game instead of a run of games. So far, we're reeling from the abysmal start. Thoughts on, is, is, is it time we stop talking about the start or has Andreas got a point there? I think the problem is until until we're in a position in the league where things are where we should be, then it it hurts, doesn't it? And, and that it's um, it, it's more the fact that when we when you win a game in your 10th and you move to 9th, then you don't, it's not a massive deal. But when you lose a game in your 10th and you drop to 13th, it is a massive deal because you've got further and further away from where you need to be. Yeah, and everyone moves away as well, don't they? Um, John C. Evening, another Miller. Consider this. It's not what, ring, what went wrong with Ipswich. It's the fact that you played the best team in League One. I think we'd all agree with that, by the way, John. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and I, think, I, think, I think it's both, though. I think, I think we're the best team in the League One. They're the best team I've seen by a long, by a long yeah, way this absolutely. season. absolutely. But they shouldn't be that much better than us. If, if, they, if they come and play like that and they beat us 2-0, 2-1, and we, and we give them a game, then fine, it happens to... It should be two good teams going against each other. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But it wasn't two good teams going against each other. It was one good team and one poor team. And the yeah. good team won very, very comfortably. Yeah, there was a gulf uh, There was a gulf between the teams, wasn't there, last night? Absolutely. Uh, people have been very generous tonight. I don't know if it, people are just generally <laughs> feeling, feeling sorry. sorry for us, having to talk <laughs> about it and everyone else in the chat. Bits, um, always um, great to have you with us. And it sounds like he's off anyway. Oh, yeah. That's all good night. <laughs> so Bits is kind of shining very brightly and then disappearing off. Oh, I love that. Thank you for your four pound point. Good summary. Donation. Perfect. Um, hi, summary. guys. We are shite. Um, there you go. The one swear oh, word that I usually love. shite. Come on, Bits. Tell us what you really think. Um, appreciate the donation. Um, <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, I just saw this coming and I will go, I'll rewind um, a bit of both, Joe. That is true, but we need to... Did yeah, he say that? I didn't hear him say we that. We need to get that on Did T-shirts, that? don't we? I don't know if I went... <sighs> Can't quite. believe it. The exact that line. didn't come no, up I'm on, sure the, um, didn't. I'm sure on didn't. the chat on Sunday night, did it? Uh, where else are oh, we got? Um, plenty of stuff on Cook. As I said at the start, I quite like to avoid that kind of stuff if we can, because I think we've generally dealt with it now if there's a different angle on it though i will 
try and um... but it's, it's it's more like for me with Cook, it's the frustration that he obviously is a good manager. He's obviously got a good record elsewhere, but it just hasn't worked for him at all yet. And he's got to start looking at what he's got available and trying to make something work with with what he's got. Not you can't just say I'm going to play four two three one with flying fullbacks if you, if you don't have the fullbacks to play it. Yeah. And, our season, our season is just going to be over before it's even begun. It's going to be over by Christmas if we play as poorly as we did in the next three or four games. We, we're going to be 12, 13, 14 points off the playoffs. It's not like when you're in a relegation scrap, you're looking up the table and teams don't move that. Like if you're seven points behind someone and you win a couple, you're probably going to be catching them up. When you're seven points behind and you're chasing a, a good team, you win two. Well, they, they, they might have won one and drawn one. So... It just takes so long to overhaul teams, and there's so many teams to overhaul. Pablo Canuga's point here, Dave, is something that I think I've seen debated on TWTD. Um, do you think Cook, and to an extent most managers, or some managers, I'm going to qualify that, um, have too much of an ego to admit their favourite system isn't working? Um, <coughs> former managers at Ipswich Town um, and have blind faith it will come good eventually. Absolutely. It's weird, and uh, someone played with the that. analogy, and I'm sure all of us on this chat and um have got a job that we do and the idea that we can just keep doing what we're doing particularly in kind of corporate roles and we're always doing training courses and learning how to do stuff in different ways it seems quite unique that football managers it's like this is how i play deal with it and everything has to change around me and i, I the suggestion there from pablo is that cook is of that school do you agree with that and do you think he's got a point there that um no, I think I think I think he's put on. I mean, in, in, I suppose in Cook's defence, he has that has been a well-worn system for him and has been very successful with it previously. Um, so I guess he thinks, well, with the quality and calibre of players got here, why shouldn't it work again? Maybe, maybe, maybe it should. But yeah, I, I think it is. It is an ego thing, and everyone can sort of see it. Cries for it certainly cries for. Well, I say four four two, certainly two up front for me. Um, and he just he just won't bend. He just mm. won't change. No, uh, even it's Simon. Um, it's it's a wet Sydney. Oh. I bet it's still something like twenty five degrees. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, like, one and a half. Yeah. It. Is the drive there? He asks. We um well um played well um, paid well to play in League One. Too easy for some. What kind of incentives are in um for players to actually achieve something? Well, I, I, um, I don't ever really. I I, I think football. Josh so reckons just, to, right, just to have got where they've got to. They're so motivated just to stay yeah. in the game. It is one of the most dog eat dog businesses out there. And if you aren't motivated every day, you'll be released. And when you get released from a league one club, you might end up end of your career effectively. So they yeah. always want to improve. They always want to do better. And like I say, you get a win bonus for every game you win. You get a bonus for finishing in the top six. You'll get a bonus if you get promoted and a big hefty wage increase. So I say there's no, the motivation is there. It's just, there's no, there shouldn't, there's no lack of incentive. Is there? Goodness me. No. no. And, and, everyone's interests are aligned for us to be as high as possible, particularly if you're a, if you're not a lone if you're a permanent player, you want to be playing at the top level as well. So and that was a criticism that was kind of pitched at last year's squad as well, wasn't it, to an extent? Um, so I think, yeah, um, Madness is trying, Michael, Madness is trying the same thing every time we're thinking it will change. I mean, at least the rotation of the players is suggesting he's trying to be different. Um, Les, to that end, Les Bailey, evening to Les. Uh, all these injuries to various players will could finally still pull a line up the clicks. Um, interesting thought on that one. I mean, stranger things have happened, guys. I've said this before, injuries, suspensions, and, and sometimes it does just happen like that. And yeah, but you'd have thought after 19 games that might well have happened already. But um, yeah. Um, Michael, I was swearing so much to the screen last night my wife could hear me at the end of the garden, 60 metres away. <laughs> wow, it's like primal scream therapy, Michael. <laughs> I got told off when she got back in Cook's fault. Yeah, any swear jar that you need to fill up, make a claim to him. Ipswich Town Football Club. Sounds, sounds like one Cook. of old young Griff's videos, that does, doesn't it? It does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing the chair. Yeah, you need to film yourself, Michael, and then get 2,000 YouTube subscribers. Be yeah, you need it. That's what we'll you need watch to do. That. Um, Mark, Prime, um, the prime of all the Marks. Makes us Rodham are so good at ganging up on our best players. Still have faced three around him every time. And they were great at crowding around and snapping at Morsey. They were... Organised, weren't they, guys? I think organised game plan, yeah. organised, and they knew they knew how to stop us playing, and they mm. and they did nip it in the bud. Exactly. Josh, keep your three shots. Oh no! Don't say moment. that, Josh. Oh, no! Oh, yeah. I missed that. Oh, dear. Luckily, I'm sure some of them will be fit by the time the transfer window opens. <laughs> 
Yeah, EB, this is this is my thought and why I still harbour hope that something might happen. I think the most worrying thing is how good we looked at Wickham and Pompey compared to playing at home against another good side last night. Is is this a sign of a inconsistency rather than fundamental problems, guys? Or am I being too fast I, 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 I think I think it's a bit of both. Yeah, 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 yeah there it is. There it is. I mean, don't, don't get us wrong. Portsmouth were bloody dreadful, weren't they? Come on, Portsmouth were awful, I think. I don't think. Um, yeah, and it all just all seemed to come right at Wickham, didn't it? Because Wickham, we were proper backs to the wall, one nil up. You know, you can see we're being sort of shit housed and bullied out of it. And all of a sudden, a little bit of magic, goalkeeper, bit of a goalkeeping error, I suppose. And and then it all started to fall into place. And you could see, yeah, OK, we've really got something and how, how good we could be. Players believing in themselves, taking risks. But yeah, I don't think you can compare, compare any of those to even to last even night. at Wickham though. You t- it takes a great save at three one. No, you're if, right. If that Joe, goes yeah. in at three two, then, then it's you're a really edgy. Game, They're going to pile on. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're but right. I, I don't know. I just find it. Did those teams not do enough to try and stop us? If that makes sense, did they no, not focus on us and they they set themselves up? Because it seems everyone that tries to stop us are seems to find a way to quite, <laughs> quite easily. Like, yeah. I saw the. Um, I know we're the top scorers in the league. I think I, I, I don't know if we still are, but rather um, uh, equal now. I think it was thirty-four. What was it thirty-four goals in sixteen in nineteen games? And I know it's a little bit. Well, if you take out when you won, but we scored six against Doncaster, four against Wickham, and four against Portsmouth. You take that out, it's twenty goals in sixteen games. It's not. It's not free scoring, is it? It's not. It's not a huge no, amount of goals, and it's just you've it's you've had, and really you look at the results of every game this season and. Those three, the big, the big wins, and um, the Lincoln away game. Have we had any other good results all season? Four, four good results in nineteen games. And did we have any good results last season under Cook in sixteen games? Arguably not. I'll leave that out. I'll leave that to fester in the ether there. It's, leave that it's to a, brew, to brew, a, uh, ruminate. Fry leave that to in ruminate. the think walk, everyone. Um, thank you in. to the thumbs up on day. <laughs> that's, my, that's my catchphrase. David Burton, Nigel Wiggs, thank you for the thumbs up on Facebook. Appreciate that. And um, we'll go on for another kind of five minutes or so, depending on how many comments we get in the questions. Predictions for crew on Sunday, please. Any selection predictions as well or, or preferences? Um, thinking left back, centre mid, um, the attacking three, whatever you want, um, get them in there if you want to shout out, anything like that. We'll do kind of a few, a couple more minutes, and then we'll say um, farewell to everyone. Um, this is an interesting one from Pete Girls. Has the Selena signing done more harm than good? Clearly a good player. We talked about this on Sunday, didn't we? But has been underwhelming so far this season and was awful last night. His words. Would you put him in our top three attacking midfielders based on this? Season guys, I, I would. I, I, I say I know he struggled last night. I think I think he can't play in a wide to... position, though, can he, Joe? He's got to be in uh, a no. Well, I think he can play wide, but he just he, he isn't going to give you full back more effective on it. Side. But I, I just found he he was the only player trying to trying to do anything, and he was the only one that sort of trying to get on the ball and a few step overs, trying to beat a man and, and break a line, which is which is what we need. So yeah, he he's not going to be he's not going to be able to break a line, drive forward, score a goal every time, and. Without him on the pitch last night, who like Chaplin, I thought did nothing at all really, and I thought Scott Fraser was quiet as anything. But yeah, not a lot came off for Selena last night. He was the only one trying anything for me. Dave, yeah, I agree with that. So was Edwards. Edwards did a bit when he came on. At least he was trying to sort of come inside a bit more often and did one or two good things. But he's mad a couple of times, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. he did. I, I didn't think, like Joe said, Fraser was Fraser-like. Was he's rather sort of a fairly anonymous, nothing, nothing special there. And Chaplin was quite, quite quiet last night. No, I agree. I mean, I think someone said earlier, you know, they're putting putting this, you know, snapping in that Moore's in, putting one or two, or him two or three players on Selena. You know, a couple of times he had the ball right in front of us. You can see he's really quick feet and step over. It's bloody incredible, really, really sort of. Ronaldo like almost, but yeah, he was the only one that was capable last night or certainly of doing anything, of opening anything up. If, if it was going to be someone, it was going to be him. I, I like Fraser, by the way. I'm, I mean, yeah, I've yeah. made that clear pretty. I would I would stick him back against alongside Morsey. I get Morsey sitting and I oh, get him him Fraser Rome. Yeah, I would. I think he but did that in the cup, it, didn't he? That's sort of listened to Kings of Anglia podcast today. And um, Andy Warren was saying on there that when Lee Evans scored that hat-trick against Doncaster... Cook was basically saying in the pre 
post-match press conference, he shouldn't be getting that far up the pitch. He needs to be staying yes. behind the ball. So yeah. what's the point of playing Scott Frazier yeah. if, if, if the role yeah. of the central midfield is just to sit behind the ball? Yeah, yeah. fair point. Um, Les, this is an important question as well. With the next few weeks coming up, is Cook going to stop his pre-game <laughs> clapping of the crowd at these bang averages before his continued crowd applause a little muted last night? <laughs> Navy due to low temperature wearing of gloves. It is, it is good when you're popular, less so. Um, and Skip's point here, hashtag stink out Portman Road. <laughs> this could be, a, <laughs> could be a difficult one for Cook, couldn't it? Because um, it, it also is quite symbolic if he doesn't do it now, doesn't it? So he's kind of made a rod for his own back, maybe, there. Interesting thought on that. Um, sure EB, I think I could hear my order. Like, Sorry, the fan know. base doesn't turn here like that, does it? It's not It's not like going out of the den, is it, when you've... If you're no, but there's 25,000 no. plus booing is louder than... I think, it, I think it's more just... I think it would be more... Uh, Silence as opposed boo to a boo. I don't, I don't think people are going to go that far unless unless the um, new owners have the same patience as Marcus Evans seemed to have. Yeah, okay. Yeah. EV, I think I could hear Michael <laughs> swearing from Portman Road last night. I think night. we need. I think we need to know where Michael where Michael resides, roughly, not the exact address. That reminds me of me and Stan on the isn't history it? pod. I was, yeah. I was yeah. to see the Brisbane it's tra- in Brisbane. <laughs> it's travelled all the way around the globe. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I can just imagine. Oh. Um, David, evening to David, um, a regular down on the Greyhound. Um, I hate to say it, but I would have been well. Yeah, I'd have been proud of my team last night if I was a Rotherham fan, which was interesting because a lot of people took umbrage with Morsey's post-match quotes that, or, or someone's quotes that we should be aiming to be like Rotherham. At League One level, we absolutely should be aiming to be like of Rotherham, we should. shouldn't we? Yeah. Promotions, r- routine promotions in the last five years from this level, you know, then you get in the championship, and this is where they fail, is figuring out how to adapt in that division. Oh, but well. um, I think David's right, isn't he? You'd be proud. at the front door. <laughs> see, see you, Joe. <laughs> I'm removing it from the screen. Michael, could be Michael Warner. Maybe it's your name. Michael Warner, the, the, the kind of echo has kind of <laughs> finally reached Ipswich. There we go. Uh, Skip, let's get some final predictions and then we'll say farewell. Yeah, I agree, Skip. 3-0. That, that would be my prediction. Absolutely. A papering a, over the Absolutely. Cracks. Bit of filler. Get a bit of filler in there with a palette knife. Exactly. Um, 5 0 win. Ooh. Oh, he's back. He's back already. There he is. Um, 5 0 win for EB. In, oh, that's the women's f- prediction. It was a fish and chip delivery for a neighbour. Oh, you didn't. Oh, so take, oh, take it. Yeah. I'll help you out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, worth mentioning that um, ITFC women also play on Sunday. They've been unable to move their, their cup tie annoyingly. So, um, How many... if, if you're feeling a little bit pissed off after Rother, maybe you go to Felixstone Walton and watch the women's team as well because they've instead, because Probably more likely to get well. I mean, through, they, shouldn't didn't, I didn't also see that one of the was it, um, was it Sophie Peskitz also now had a, an, an ACL yeah, diagnosis. Yeah, same as Blue as well. Wilson, isn't it? Crikey, yeah, really yeah. Sad for her. yeah well, obviously, we did an interview with her at the start of the season. She was yeah, the first, did, so. first of the pros that signed. Fingers deals. crossed for a speedy, so, yeah. speedy recovery yeah, there. Yeah. And um, by the looks of things, we are hoping Monday the 6th we'll be sitting down with Abby Lafayette. Um, who we sponsor, oh. um, and um, that will go out around that week as well. So hoping to speak to them on the back of that tremendous victory away at Southampton. Um, let's keep the predictions going. 2-1 town from Eric Clacton. Charlie D. Crew, start Piggott, give Morsey an extra <laughs> Red Bull and win 2-0, just 2-0 with the extra Red Bull. Um, Selena was hot and cold in his previous spell, says Skip. Ooh. I'm not sure about that one. Well, yeah. He had his moments to knee. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's Probably a sort of player, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, he is. The yeah, flair I'm... players do tend to be up and down, though. I remember being behind the goal in QPR when he scored an absolute worldie, didn't he? Do you that remember that one? Goal, uh, yeah, uh, and then that game, game. Sunderland, went all kind of wrong. brilliantly Leeds, against Leeds, Sunderland. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds. Oh, Leeds. Yeah, Michael. Um, I think we're going to thump crew five 0 Happy swear jar at the ready. <laughs> Effing different class. Um, Chris, f- giving us some feedback. Keep the flag show, flagship show as a consider review, please. Well, oh. to be fair, Chris, we have to record it at 7.30, whatever happens. So whether it's live or whether it's free record, we'll still only have four hours to consider our thoughts. And um, Mind you, I'm old and miss Ben in the car park. I have just witnessed five nil that's what we think isn't it so interesting there but i think on this one because it's a sunday game chris that's why we don't think it makes much difference but happy to take the feedback um there you go alemba that was where michael fight resides there you go there you go Um, nice uh david w is right there i'm getting that on t-shirt rich there you go um and i think 
there's a there's a Simon, I see your question, your point in the chat. I think I might want to end on a positive rather than praying for defeats or what have you. So we will we will end with positives. We will end with some plugs. Um, Blue Monday ITFC is where you can find all of our Blue Monday ITFC.co.uk. You can find all our details there, all of our shows, all of our feeds, all of our socials, all of our bloody blah, blah blah blah. Blue Monday ITFC. Um, you can also find all of us on the twitter if you want to continue the conversation uh, let me just put our names up there and as i mentioned pre-match show back on friday morning and um, with plenty of time to watch that flagship show uh, either live on sunday or pre-recorded on sunday and then put out on monday morning and we'll let you know whether we're doing that live or not and then the usual deal with shows probably wednesday i don't think arsenal merits a live reaction at full-time show but charlton probably does the week after so keep your um, eyes peeled on our Twitters and all of that stuff to see what's going on there. And as always, thank you for everyone who's joined us. Thank you, especially to the guys who gave us super chat donations. Really appreciate those. Thanks for the thumbs up on Facebook. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube as well if you're there. Um, and guys, if I had predictions from for crew from you guys, we'll end with those. Dave, do you want to go first? Um, I'm going with stats 4-2. Four 4-2. Two. Four two. Comfortable. Okay. Three, three nil, three one. Okay, there we go. Well, then, with some final comments, keep the faith, fellas. Come on, you blues. That's what we want. Um, EB, thanks again, boys. Joe's made me want fish and chips. I'm not even getting it. I can't believe you didn't bring them in. (laughs) Um, Skip, thanks for cheering me up. We did our best. Um, Charlie D, thank you for joining us. Always, always, Sunny Brisbane, Michael. Yeah, thank you for that. B girls, appreciate that. uh, uh, Thank you, Chris. And David Button, we'll end with this. Just a win will do. Here, here. I think that would be the perfect way to sign us off. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we'll catch you soon.